if you are a Republican candidate for Senate, this, what we're about to show you, is not the kind of reception you want to get from members of your own party. That was Arizona Senate candidate and prominent election denier Republican Carrie Lake getting loudly booed by members of her own party at the Arizona GOP's annual convention last month. Carrie Lake is not what you might call a unifying figure even inside the Republican Party. But in October, she was endorsed by Donald Trump, which means that the rest of the Republican Party now has to fall in line behind Carrie Lake. And so today, Ms. Lake was officially endorsed by the National Republican Party's Senate campaign arm. This is just the latest sign that the National Republican Party now appears to exist for the sole purpose of carrying out Donald Trump's bidding. Just this week, Trump endorsed another election denier, Michael Watley, to replace Ronna McDaniel, who is the current head of the Republican National Committee. Trump also endorsed his own daughter-in-law, Laura Trump, to be the RNC new co-chair, which would make her a top deputy of the party chair. Trump says that this endorsement is about helping to ensure fair and transparent elections across the country. It is a move that is also very much the type of thing you see in authoritarian dictatorships. Joining me now is former RNC chair and co-host of The Weekend on MSNBC, Michael Still Steele. And still with me, of course, is Claire McCaskill. Michael, um, which is worse, the election denier or the nepotism? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, I think what we try to do on the Republican side is a little bit of both, you know, <laughs> just, it's, you know, it's like a good martini. It's, it, you know, gotta have it dry or with an olive, you know, the twist, whatever. You kind of mix it up, right? That's the thinking here. You know, you've got, you've got Watley from North Carolina who has been a, a Trump, uh, uh, sycophant for a long time. You now have Trump's daughter-in-law coming in and taking over as co-chair, or presumably that's the way that vote will go. And then, of course, you know, Trump wants to put one of his guys in as sort of the the day-to-day -day, uh, overseer of the Republican National Committee. Let's not lose sight of what this is all about. This is not about fair and, and open and safe elections. This is about grift. This is about the diversion of RNC funds during the rest of this uh, presidential cycle to pay for Trump's legal bills. It, it happened when he was president. It had happened since he's been president, and it will continue to happen going forward. Now they have greater control over how that money is going to be raised, how that money is going to be spent. You don't think his daughter-in-law is going to make sure her father-in-law is taken care of? Of course not. So the reality of it is the party has now said, Donald Trump, it's all yours. Whatever aspect of it, whatever feature of it you want, you got. We've got the Senate lined up. We've got the House lined up. We've got the party apparatus lined up. So this is now fully, full on the MAGA party. Any remnants of Reagan, uh, Bush, Eisenhower, gone. Um, Claire, the cynic in me says, OK, it's a MAGA party. If they're going to try and win, maybe that's what they think they have to do. And yet history shows us that Donald Trump is terrible at picking winners. I think the last time the RNC let Donald Trump handpick officials, almost all of his picks ended up pleading, is it guilty to federal crimes or being credibly accused of sexual assault to say nothing of his Senate picks. I think, remember Blake Masters in Arizona, Herschel Walker in Georgia, Mehmet Oz in Pennsylvania. I mean, this guy has whatever the opposite of a Midas touches when it comes to elections. Well, make no mistake, the Republicans in the Senate are trying hard to keep that mistake from not repeating. And the way they've done that is they they made Steve James chair of the Republican Senate committee. He went down to Mar-a-Lago, kissed the ring, said, I'm all for you, Trump. I'm going to be loyal to you. Will you work with us? And so they have really tried to keep Trump from going out on his own and endorsing these really big MAGA candidates. I mean, look at Montana.
Trump endorsed the guy that Mitch McConnell wants in Montana, Rosendale, just filed, who is a MAGA loyalist from the House. And they're going to have a knockdown, drag out Republican primary for the Senate in Montana. But Trump is not on the MAGA side of that equation this time. So McConnell has really tried to outmaneuver him by trying to force him into the lane of what they believe are stronger candidates. Now, I'll just tell you this. I watched that video of of Kerry Lake at that Republican convention. And having spoken at many of my party's conventions in my state, all I can say is yikes. I mean, if I walked into the room of the people that are the most active in my party and was greeted with that kind of booing, I mean, it would be a brutal reality. So I think they got trouble in Arizona no matter what Trump does. Well, yeah, Michael, I mean, to Claire's point, is it horse trading? You, you get Mitch McConnell's Montana Senate candidate, but then you have to give him a, a mulligan, I guess, to use the golf well, term in Arizona with yeah. Carrie Lake? Well, look, I mean, it, it, take both of those races. I mean, the reality of it is, in each of those instances, MAGA is going to control who becomes the next uh, nominee. So, yeah, uh, McConnell may have boxed, uh, you know, D Trump into endorsing uh, his candidate. Doesn't mean, one, that Donald Trump won't change his mind and unendorse that endorsement, right, and move on away from it. But you still have the base is the part that votes. And so it doesn't matter in the main whether McConnell wins that endorsement battle or Trump does. Trump knows that at the end of the day, he's going to have his vote turn out for the candidate that is closest to him, because that's who they want. So yeah, the booing was not MAGA booing Kerry. Those were traditional Arizona Republicans who are frustrated by what has become of their party, not a reflection of necessarily of where the party is going to end up. She got the endorsement of the senatorial committee. What more does that tell you? So the booing really didn't matter much, did it? Because it's already baked in where this is going to go. MAGA controls the outcome of elections, the primary elections in the Republican Party. And that is a reality. And what's going to be interesting to watch is in a state like Maryland now that Larry Hogan has jumped into this U.S. Senate race there, the dynamics on the ground there have changed and could be a lesson for the party going forward because he now has so much changed the dynamics that he potentially levels up the game for Republicans in the state to win that seat. Not the MAGA Republicans. He's running independent of them. And that's going to be an important uh, race to watch in that regard as well. Do you still get to call yourself a Republican if you're not a MAGA Republican? Just asking. Michael just, Steele just. and Claire McCaskill, thank you both, my friends, for your time tonight. I appreciate it.